In a world where people go trekking, who have questions about trekking, two people who go trekking are here to answer your questions about trekking. Introducing the Tuesday Tune-In, hosted by Andy and Dave. Are we live? No. As far as we know, it's live. Let's check if we're live, mate. Let's check if we're live. Are we live? Live. 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 Tackling subjects such as... Talk about good travel. Charities. Altitude. Flying. Footwear. Vaccination. Fitness. So you can make an informed decision about trips and go into them as prepared as possible. Years of expertise shrouded in top-level banter. Tune in every Tuesday at 12.30-ish. Nice. Are we live? Right, let's check um, Let's check if we're live, Dave. I'm sure we are. Uh, we definitely are. Uh, can... I'm still watching the trailer. I don't know about you. <laughs> um, I think we are because I can say, hey, Shona. Oh, hey, Shona's on Hey, it. Steve. <laughs> and uh, Claire, um... Jim. Hey, Jim. How you doing, mate? I hope all is well. Um, sorry, if you've noticed... We have someone else with us. <laughs> this is Jamie from Cotswold Outdoor. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking all about equipment today. So literally, I think, Dave, if you were talking about it, it would be what, a complete load of kit? Talking a complete load of kit, yeah, <laughs> that's it. No, we've, we've done it before. But no, it, it's, we've been wanting to do this for, for ages, and we're trying to work out kind of logistics, um, you know, a, a date we can get in the diary, because, you know, if you've been on any of the Tuesday tuners before, I know we usually do it from, from Evertrack HQ, but we were like, right, let's let's see if we can organise a date, get to Cotswold, um, you know, because we've been partnered with Cotswold now for, you know, best part of three and a half years. Um, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to come and, and chat with Jamie. Um, yeah. th- I'm sure there's going to be sleeping bag questions with these sleeping bags behind. I think <laughs> it's probably as important to say as well that they, they haven't closed the store for us. No, no, it's they, everyone. They, they, the customers and, are still and, around. And, right? and, and Jamie is working today. <laughs> Might need to pop off. Yeah, yeah exactly. So <laughs> we we probably will lose Jamie at some point because yeah. Um, yeah, customer service is paramount. And exactly. So if you do need to go, mate, that's fine. Yeah. Just remember, you're mic'd up. Yeah. Because so, <laughs> yeah. that would be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. Go know, to right? Steve first to get the mic off before you go. God, those pair up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's brilliant. Um, so yeah, because we're we're here about equipment. As always, guys, any question goes but you know if you do have any specific equipment questions do comment with those because that's what we're here for yeah we've had a few in from uh john from brecon uh doug from newport and greg from Callon so far yep exactly uh no no we've had a few off ever trackers as well um but yeah definitely get your questions in uh bry is on danny and andrew weirdly we're having to watch the live as we record the live yeah. it's because we realize when we do this we don't often interact with the queries um so i want to say it's quite uh, interesting afternoon yet he's tuning in from the old greenham Commons sire um we've got kim all the way from tanzania as well who's just come off um Achille. so kim welcome um it's always great to see uh sort of ever trackers joining from from the trips as well so Glad you got Wi-Fi. Richie Morioni. Is this Richie's first time? I don't remember a Morioni joining before. And he says, good day. Does that mean we've got another Australian? Uh, potentially. Because uh, normally we have Leah, but she's out in Nepal at the minute. She is. So uh, we might have, we, it's good to have another Australian. And Unless we've got Tom you just, from Greece, who's got his popcorn ready. That's always good. Nice yeah. one, Tom. Exactly. Um, uh, I don't know, yeah. It's probably, probably beer o'clock by uh, now, Tom. Uh, honestly, whatever, whatever time it is around the world, it, it's Tuesday tune-in time. Fair. These guys are dedicated, man. Fair. Yeah, they get it. Like, I, I mean, Brian, he says the old Greenham Common Sire. Is, that, missing, is. is that a pub? Uh, Greenham Common. I don't know. He's not a convent. No, uh, sorry. Greenham Common. I, I think he's, he, he's out in Greenham and there's a common. No, no, I think it's a pub called the Greenman, Green and Common Sire. Oh, really? No, okay. I, I, I mean, I'm just, I, I have no basis for that. I don't know, I know we're going to have to, this is, this is very weird. But anyway, we're, um, whatever you are, Bright, uh, I'm glad you're not stuck in Kathmandu for 10 days. He's um, not. <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, long story, long story, Jamie, but uh, no, no, literally as COVID struck back in March 2020, yeah, yeah. Bry, who's one of our ever trackers, was stuck with another probably 15, 16 other ever trackers in the Everest region. They literally were at Everest Base Camp the day it, the borders were shut. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, they loved it. Um, although we had to get, we had to um, open up one of the hotels in Kathmandu, and they were stuck there for about 10 days. Um, luckily, the bar was full. So it wasn't when they left. It wasn't when they say, left. Yeah. They're still recovering from the, <laughs> the trauma of having to serve those boys. <coughs> anyway, should we dive into it, do you reckon? Yeah, Ange? well, Cause, where, where do you want to start today? Because I know we normally we talk of equipment, we usually start from 
the bottom up. Yeah, well, we've come all the way, like we say, to Cotswold yeah. in Brecon. Um, Jamie's our man here. In fact, he was pitched to me as, Jamie's your man to go on the live. He lives off grid. He's done everything. <laughs> I what know, you they, they picked you up. That's a fair uh, assessment. <laughs> well, I, I don't like to be called a, an expert, but yeah, like I said, sort of live, live off grid as much as you can. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, you just sort of, well. I can try and help as best I can. Yeah, awesome. brilliant. I mean, and Great stuff, so man. anyone that like wants to get kitted out or something, yeah. they can come here, they can talk to you, you can help them. Because I, I tell you where we'll start in the most obvious and most asked question, which is about okay. which is about boots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so if I come in here, Jamie, and I know nothing about boots, um, I can come to you, figure out which type of pair I need. And most yeah. importantly, can you help customers like get a good fit as well? Definitely, yeah. So we'll measure everything essentially. Yeah. Get you socks, and then obviously sort of question you on what sort of walking you're going to be wanting to do. Essentially, yeah. Nice. Um, and then obviously whether you'd want a light boot, or a textile leather boot, or, yeah. or anything of them that caliber. Essentially, nice. Yeah, because we, we do get asked a lot, don't we? Because some people are more comfortable in like trail shoes, where yeah. other people. You know, want a little bit more protection, so yeah. they have kind of a bigger, you know, like a Mandel Bhutan yeah, yeah. kind of boot. Um, you know, which which we mentioned once or twice, when we, Dave? Yeah, um, the Is old that your favorite. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, I, I got a couple of pairs. It's yeah. um, it took me about five years to land on them. Yeah, like oh, I've okay. tried, I've tried so many different pairs of boots. Yeah, and then one day I was on a training weekend with uh, Evertrekker Kiara Martin. That's right. Yeah, and so that's and she was wearing them and said that she'd had them for like 10 years. Yeah. And I was like, you've had a boot the last 10 years. And there was the Mandels. Yeah. I bought a pair, went to Everest Base Camp. Yeah. And <coughs> sometimes you just click with a pair. Yeah. I tell you what I did use, and I know you've got them on the shelf over there. I, I used the those Super Feet Trailblazer insoles. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant insoles. They and are, um, yeah. they, they revolutionized it because I've got a bad left knee. I used to have a bad right knee, but it got promoted to good knee. Oh, when okay. I damaged the left and, um, <laughs> you know, destroyed so the yeah, destroyed the left. So that, that got demoted to bad knee. And this one, <laughs> it's waited long for that promotion. Yeah. And, um, but actually the trailblazers that I found that they made my feet incredibly stable. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I had less of that movement. And obviously not only do you get blisters, but that slight movement, particularly on the downs, can yep. travel up to your knees, your hips and everything. So exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Do you want to grab any boots then? I know it, it's a bit like supermarket sweep now, isn't it? Yeah. We're literally, like, Jamie, do you want to be the collector of boots? I feel bad for Damn Jamie because I know he's got to get back to work <laughs> know, at some point know, because we've got to grab him. But um, if we grab the boots then, Jamie, do you want to, yeah. you can dip out and then if we need you, we can shout you again? Of yeah, course. let's do that. That's no problem. Go for it. I reckon Mindle if Boutin's, we... What's that? The Mindle Boutin. Could you grab me the my, This is like a kid in candy store. I know. The Mindles. And I think, are they the, the last spot? Not the Nepal cubes or whatever they are, but the ones beneath, the B2s? The second one's down. The second one's down. The yeah. second Las Bortivas on the down. Yeah, I can grab The grey ones, yeah. And, and the main dolls. one left of them, to be honest. They're yeah. trophy pieces. I've been keeping them. Yeah. Have they? It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's we don't get a lot of technical, yeah. technical boots. It's, but yeah. it's purely for display purposes only, yeah, and yeah. then I'll give it back to you at the end. I'll grab awesome. Them I wouldn't trust it. Cheers, Jamie. <laughs> no, well, I've watched awesome. Jamie's going to get some of the boots then. Um, yeah, I mean, with, with, with boots, I know we've... We've covered it a lot, and actually, we were thinking, is this going to be special? But actually, we thought, actually, let's, let's talk about all the other stuff because you know, things like sleeping bags. I know uh, questions coming about sleeping bags. We're, we're going to cover that, but you know, the, the, the reason we talk about boots so much is that you know, if you are, and you know, if you've been on the Tuesday tune in for a while, you know uh, how important it is compared to all the other stuff. Because if if your feet are bad and your feet go, or you roll an ankle, or you do something. It's, it's kind of game over for the trip, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah. okay, if you get blisters and things, you can kind of pick them up and you can get them sorted. But naturally, you need to look after your feet. You need a, um, you know, your feet are so important. And that's why, because I, I haven't used, I never used insoles, really, until you recommend You can come in, Jamie, He's it's back. okay. You yeah, can yeah, come, yeah. come back. In. You come in, and then And then we'll let you go, but this oh, is brilliant, isn't it? I know. This, this, Jamie, could be this a, is great. This wow. could be an expensive Tuesday tuning for us. <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, we really like. You are right because when you think about it, I mean, I'm sure at mine. That is the. That is the. <laughs> you know, you're laughing at the pink again, aren't you? No, no, I'm not. No. Awesome, Jamie. No, no, um, I, I like that you, were, you, you, you got the pink. Yeah, but like when you think of that surface area, that's all I have to get me up to six thousand meters yeah. to get me back down again. The importance of something like this yeah. is like really important. Um, and we have talked about the different types of boots before, but well, so I've got two pairs here. Go on, Dave. The, the, I know you like your boots. I, and I'm clucking to get at them. It's fine, mate. But the, the main two pairs that we... <laughs> so we do two types of trips, really. One of them is yeah. like the 
um, you know, a trekking holiday. Dave, did I say holiday? Ooh. I think you need to trekking, store. A, trekking, a, <laughs> trekking adventure. Um, yeah, we do trekking trips. You know, where there's no technical climbing. So your classic example of that might be Kilimanjaro. It might be an Everest base camp trek. Yeah. And for those types of things, you won't need a technical climbing boot. You'll need a really good hiking boot. Yeah. You will get people that recommend the trail shoes. Um, we always say, listen, if that's what's best for you and that's what you're used to, then that's okay. Yeah. But you do have to make some sacrifices in terms of stability. Yes. So these are the ones that you may have heard us talking about before. They do look familiar, Dave. Box I'm fresh. I know. Do you sell a lot of these, Jamie? To be honest, yeah. These, <laughs> yeah. They, they, um... I, I bought one from this store probably around six months ago. Yeah? Because we were visiting Brecker Mountain Rescue around the corner. Oh, nice. And, uh, like I said, it's like a sweet shop coming in here. It is. Yeah. So I came in, I was like, right, I need a new pair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I love these. And I was just literally chatting to um, him before. And it took me a long time to land on these boots because I tried lots of different ones. And I, I kind of stayed away from the leather heavier boot, yeah. Yeah. thinking that the textile boot would be better for me. But I never quite found one that was like had that locked in feel that we talk about. It's super comfy. I mean, I mean, the, yeah. big, the big thing that I find about it is that even because I, I injured my ankle ligaments probably around six weeks ago before I went to Peru. Right. Um, but wh when I, and I was wearing just, uh, it wasn't even these, it was an, an old, um, I think it was Salomon's actually. Hmm. But you know, the, the grips had worn, I slipped on but I didn't just roll my ankle. Yeah. But these, I know if I, if I put, you know, with this kind of level, I find that it gives me a bit of confidence. Yeah. If I'm going from like rock to rock or jumping across a stream or whatever it is, or even if you're going on, like, yeah, I, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, 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 just, just, Anytime I hear Andy jumping across the stream, I remember one trip where we went up to it was the bomber up near Danarogov. Right, yeah, and he and yeah. he Come did he did he, I think the aim was to jump across the stream. <laughs> um, the execution was lacking. It was lacking. Um, yeah, so yeah, what I fair. remember Everyone was he, falls, he, right? he, he you did hit your hip quite hard. Well, I but, supermaned it down the stream. But pretty much oh, like wow. yeah, I know, pretty yeah. much like you see him just upside down, like sliding <laughs> towards the water. But these certainly help yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, when you look at these, you look at the tread pattern; they're very thick big deep sort of like um tread in there then they're not as flexible as some which no. i which i actually think I, I like that yeah i prefer it yeah um you know because you don't you don't get a lot of the horrible chattery feedback on rocks yeah i'm thinking Tupcal. we went there in morocco and it was, was it back in april april, april. it was yeah. very rocky shaly yeah. that yeah, type yeah. of thing yeah if you've got a more flexible lighter sole you feel kind of every one of them after a couple of days uh, right, i yeah. found this really helped it's got that, um, I haven't even got the, you can tell me if I'm making any mistakes here, but I've read about these a lot. <laughs> I've got, it's got the memory foam upper as well, so. Yeah, yeah. that is very comfortable, to be honest. Yeah. I'm it, very tempted. I've tried them on, but unfortunately my foot is a little bit wider and it, yeah. it doesn't quite fit for me. Where we do get a bit of a pain. Do you know what? I'll, wider feet, don't yeah. we? We have quite a lot of questions. I think, actually, I think it was Shona yeah. who's on here as well. As well. All right. Um, um, all the way from, from Bonnie, Scotland. Um, but in terms of, are there any other kind of ones you'd recommend for people with wider feet? So mine will do a uh, perfectly sort of well, wide uh, fit for oh. the comfort fit teams, essentially. It's going to be the widest okay. fitting you can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine will themselves have the regular fit is quite wide, but yeah, yeah, sometimes obviously customers come in, they've got an extra wide foot. Or, yeah, yeah. So yeah, mine will comfort Comfort fit's probably the best for that. I'm gonna look it up. I yeah. hope Mindle are listening. We're getting a lot of getting a lot of uh, of pluses here. I've been trying. I've been trying for years, mate. Years. I know. I know. Right. Yeah. Not, a, not a not not a whiff of free boots. Oh, what? <laughs> but, uh, brilliant. But brilliant. I, you are right, though. That's the one thing I will say about these. When I first put them on, I do yeah. find that they are probably a smidge too tight for me. Mm. Yeah. But having worn them through that. I don't get blisters, so I can put in. up with it. And yeah. then after a while, they because they're leather, they will bend and mold a bit. Yeah. So it yeah. doesn't cause me any problems. But as soon as I put them on, I, you know, the first the time I noticed it, it was really bad. Yeah. Um, I wore them on a plane. I got a habit of wearing my hiking boots on a plane. <laughs> so they, so if so, it, well. so so yeah, so oh, if all my no. luggage gets lost, yeah, yeah. at least I got my boots. Yeah. And I tried to point. put it on when we landed, and it was like. <laughs> <laughs> and I, just couldn't, I really couldn't get it in. I didn't think of that. But, but this yeah, is a, it's a good shout actually because it does happen. Yeah. It's quite common. Yeah. yeah. Especially on long haul. For me, I think this is a yeah. perfect boot for you know the hiking trips that we do. Um, good for even some mountains. Yeah. Um, like you could wear this on Tupcal in the summer. This would just be fine on its own. <coughs> in the winter, you can get like a, a um, 
like the the all purpose a, a C zero or C one crampon, the yeah. one that kind of fits to a normal hiking boot. Yeah. And yeah. this is this is stiff enough to kind of handle it. It would, yeah. So I think this would be perfect even for those people that are thinking yeah. Tupcal in winter. Um, you don't have to go to a technical boot, but um, yeah. But if you did have to go to a technical boot, slightly more technical boot. It's a nice segue. Well, I know. <laughs> nice segue. I will say as well that obviously this is just what I find works, what you find yeah, works. But already, exactly. Jamie, they're not quite correct for him. I yeah. think that speaks to the yeah. importance of like coming to a place like this, which is yes. why we wanted to do a live here. Yeah, yeah. Because you'd find that out by wearing them right and putting them on, getting the socks, the insoles, everything fitted, laced yeah. right, and then trial and error over the little bridge and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You'd be amazed how, how, how many people don't know how to tie, tie laces. Yeah. Really? It just they come in and they just quickly chuck them on and think, yeah. oh, yeah, my yeah. feet are moving around. It's like, well, tie yeah. laces properly. Yeah. It's a good it, one, it, actually. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Especially in a rush. Yeah. Because before you're going out on a hike or something, you know, you really do take your time, you know, you, you put them through. Yeah. But it, yeah, 100% you're right. And it is good because you like, it might not be right for yourself. And I know a lot of Evertrekkers who, you know, Mandels and, and the Bhutans haven't worked for them. Yeah. They've gone to, to something else, you know, like uh, obviously you've got La Sportivas, you've got Scarpers. Yeah, yeah. You know, for, for years I used um, the North Face Hedgehog GTX. All oh, right, yeah. They were good I've ones. Seen them around, yeah. I'm yeah, they're, they're not really as like popular anymore. No. But the first, I'd say the first three times I went to Everest, I wore those. Wow. Um, whereas since, ever since I switched to the main doors, I haven't gone back. See. But that's just because they're, they're kind of, you know, I, I trust them now. Yeah. You know? I had the Hedgehogs, but they weren't Hedgehogs when I had them. No, they renamed them. They didn't renamed they? them the yeah, Hedgehog, yeah, but did, before yeah. that, they were just like the North Face GTX boot or something like that. But yeah. um, I gotta be honest, I love those boots, but they just weren't that durable. Yeah. After yeah. Um, a sort of season of wearing them, they were pretty bad. But um, this nice. is the exact boot. Believe it or not, I own this boot. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, and it's, it's a beaut, isn't you it? You would have heard stories about when I, I did the Glencoe Challenge. What a day, boot man. Um, In those. Yeah, I know. Twenty six point two miles. It's, I'll be it's honest a marathon with you. Over you basically, you've got the West Highland Way. It's yeah. I I, I was laughing. Jeez. I got to be honest. I mean, it, it was a horrific mistake, Jamie. Um, <laughs> what I did was I bought these um, because at the time, this is pre COVID. I was thinking Island Peaks not far yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get this. So this would be a pretty decent boot for Island Peak. Yeah. There are more insulated ones, yeah. um, but this is pretty much what I was gonna use. And when I put it on, I was surprised how comfortable it was. And yeah. I thought. Or standing up, uh, yeah, and I'm not moving. Yeah, well, yeah. Just, yeah I, I, I don't even know if I stood up. I think I, I think I, I, think, I, I, think, I, I think they, they arrived yeah, in the post. Like I put them on the boot, and I was like, "That's pretty much a marathon, right?" And then, and then I thought to myself, "I'm going to wear them in Glencoe and wear them in. They'll be lovely for a. Uh, imagine how An comfortable hour. they'll be." And I remember within the first five k, thinking this might have been a mistake. Yeah, yeah. They're very stiff. Mm, like very you, stiff. like you could, tr you cannot bend these. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I did the full twenty six miles, but the next day, uh, in Fort William in Scotland, I walked barefoot into a Cotswold outdoor shop. You did. And, uh, and, and bought some. Uh, I bought the Reef extra cushion flip flops. <laughs> Honestly, I've never. Yeah, I. It was watching him walk like John Wayne for the last probably ten miles. It was that was that was entertaining. It was horrific. Did he record it? No, there, no there well, was I some, was struggling there, at the time. I wasn't the only one because uh, I I done my hamstring. We're the uh, walking right. wounded. So, we arrived like we came back from Vietnam. We Great. normally would take about That's nine and a half adventure. hours. <laughs> yeah, it took us it took us ten and three quarter hours that year. Yeah, I reckon we lost at least two and a half hours. Yeah, easy due to injury. Oh. And um, well, I wasn't so much injured but just broken. Mm. Like the feet were so painful <sighs> every time I put it down. Um, so I haven't picked them up since, but honestly, I would wear them yeah. if I was going to go to a summit or something like that. Because yeah. when you wear them and you have the cramp on and they're for their intended use, you won't yeah. get that suffering. No, they're not designed to trek for 26 miles. No. Yeah. Um, but the re so this is a, a B2 boot that you would wear with a, a C2 cramp on. Yeah. The biggest and easiest way you can tell the difference is on the back of a, um, a B2 boot, you've got a little <coughs> here, yeah. um, which is a hard, real tough plastic platform. Um, where a C2 crampon would clamp on and then you yeah. pull it up to the back of the boot and that locks it in place with the toe cage. Um, and that would be something. I mean, I did use um, a pair of these yeah. um, on Tupcal in winter um, just because I had they're the crampons that I own. But I could have got away, like I said, with the, the mandles. Yeah. But you, would, you could also use these if you wanted to on Island Peak. You know, they're absolutely amazing. Um, they're that a request. What's the request? And you're going to love this one. So Diane, uh, I think a lace tie and demo. Again. She might have one of the.
Training weekend, Diane. Yeah, that, uh, I was going to say, that's a training weekend thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, literally. This yeah, but, famous... Yeah, but in, in front of Jamie, though, it might be a bit embarrassing because I might be wrong. <laughs> no, no. But, um, no, but the, the way I tie mine... I want to see this. Now... <laughs> no, no, because it works. It, it, like, it does. Tom, um, we were, I was on the Machu Picchu trip uh, about three and a half weeks ago. Yeah. He uses this method and just prefers the kind of locked-in feel. Yeah. Because they so, did this probably, what, about two and a half, three years ago. And then loads of ever trekkers have kind of followed it and, and find yeah. it. And it just it just works. That's yeah. Cool. I'll be honest. Like you, you are right when you talk about how a lot of people don't know how to tie their laces. Yeah. When yeah. at least you know th this is really a piece of climbing equipment yeah. and needs to be fastened correctly, like a harness yeah. or anything else. Yeah. I was doing the whole how hey, you're taught in school. Yeah. Cross, 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 double bow at the top. Yeah. Let's yeah. go hiking. Yeah. And I used to find that it wasn't um, yeah. secure enough. So the way I tie mine, and Jamie, if you have a different method, no, no. you'd be more than happy to demonstrate. But um, yeah, you can only criticise mine if you demonstrate yourself, <laughs> right? That's the rules. Just so you know, it's a bit of a crock shot at the moment. Is it a bit of a crock shot? I'll tell you what I'm going to do then, just to, just to keep the... Uh, <laughs> is that better? <laughs> is, is that better, Steve? You keep it PG. Yeah, we wow. are, we are okay. pre-watershed, aren't we? So... Um, yeah, so this is this is harder though. So <laughs> I tend to go like that, and I put a double line over and yeah, put it yeah. like that, and then that will hold firm. Yep. Go around, and then what I'll tend to oh, do. It's popped off. It has popped off. It's because it's really hard to do, and it's not on your feet. Good. We got time. <laughs> I'm gonna start sweating in a minute. And be like, <laughs> talk about sleeping bags, boys. I gotta do this every time. Trying trying to tie yeah. someone else's laces. So it's, it's weird, hard. Isn't it? So yeah. then I'll do another double one, but then I'll take it up to the top loop. Yeah. Yeah. And then down. And then take it down and, t and actually the, the knot secures in, is nice. secures in the middle. Very good. Nice. So then, you know, you can... That is... Obviously, I will take up the lace, perhaps a double... If anyone's but clapping it. at home, I want to record but it that's because how that was I, very good. That's <laughs> how I, I tie mine in the mountains. And yeah. obviously, I'll adjust, you know, I'll adjust this by going around more if I need yeah. to take up more lace. But yeah. essentially what it does is if by going around an extra couple of times here, it's tight here, it goes up and keeps the top secure. But you don't really, I, I find I don't want that bit mega, mega tight. You want, a bit you more want the secure yeah. more or here. Yeah, exactly. That way it'll stop your foot actually sliding, but allow this bit enough flex so when you are moving and leaning forward it's not like cutting off the blood supply yeah jamie was that a good <laughs> method that was perfect i was gonna say it's Absolutely not bad is it perfect. he's done that like, once do, or twice you do an extra knot so i don't put this knot in but yeah like i said yes oh, right, okay. uh, that's really good yeah that, yeah. that nice. that's what i find works for me um yeah and yeah if you look at it like it looks at you know it, it does look a bit weird but my foot doesn't move yeah and i find the ex the reason why i do the extra knot and I started doing this when I was wearing a pair of the the Hoka One One ones. All right. But yeah. they had very like slippery laces. Yeah. So by doing ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So by doing the extra one, La Sportiva's are brilliant because you always yeah. get these slightly springy laces. Yeah. And you get a real tight feel. But the the One One, the Hockers, I found they would they would gradually loosen. So by putting yeah, the, the extra knot in, good. helped it yeah. secure. And I've just kept the method the whole the whole time. Yeah. But awesome. um, that's a boot display. I was going to say, love boots. of God, talk about sleeping bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had some, some questions come in and we'll, we'll come on to them. I think, um, who was it? I think it was Becky. Uh, hey, Becky, how are you doing? Uh, I bought the Merrill Moab GTX boots to wear over the summer. They're so comfortable. Will they be sturdy enough for EBC? Or am I better off getting my Altberg leather boots? It's a good one, actually. Merrill Moab, because I'm, I'm wearing Merrills, actually. Uh, these are, these are more, more trail shoes. But yours, uh, the GTX boots actually are, are perfect. The, the Moab mid GTX are perfect, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah, Just as good. good. Um, I know the Altberg leather boots. Again, they're probably a bit more like Mandels, right? But uh, they're definitely sturdy enough for Everest Base Camp. Yeah, definitely. You're thinking of the terrain, thinking about, I mean, once you get up to sort of 5,000 meters and you've got the, the glacial moraine and you're kind of getting close to the Kumbu Glacier, you're going to be, uh, it, honestly, I, I think they'll be fine. Um, especially if, you know, you've, okay, you've worn them over the summer. Um, they're, they're, they're so comfortable, honestly. I'd I'd go for it. I know you mentioned they're not that great in the wet. Yeah, I suppose if you're using something like a Alpberg, it'd probably be a bit better. But what do you reckon? Go with the Moabs. Yeah, I think they're a great boot. You said they're a very popular boot, Jamie. Would you say? They are, yeah. The yeah. mids, yeah. The mid, yeah, the mid GTX. Yeah. 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 No, Which, I do. You know, I think they're. Grip. Yeah, I think they're a really, uh, yeah. really popular boot. You see a lot of them on the trail. They're one of the more regular ones that you see on the trail, I think, like that. Probably the most popular I've ever yeah. seen is the Salomon's 
the 4X or something like that. The Quest, is it? Or? The yeah, Quest, that's yeah. Quest yeah. for GTX? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So see, they're probably the most popular. I have no idea why, because I've never worn them. They might be yeah. fantastic. I've never tried them, actually. Yeah, but yeah. Um, certainly the Merrells as well are, are, are really good. Nice. Um, I did I had one question from Dan as well. She did have yeah. some B2 boots, um, because she was expecting to do Tupacal in November, but it's now July. Am I likely to need them for the Ring of Fire in July? Um, honestly, I... I would say probably they're going to be overkill, uh, yeah. Yeah. and because you, you're going to be doing <coughs> a lot of miles, a lot of hiking, yeah. Um, and for those for those purposes, I would say you'd want something like the main door, a bit more flexible, a yeah. bit more comfortable for everyday use, and a bit more padded and underneath. Like that's really good, but it's a mountaineering tool. July. This is a hiking tool, yeah. so I would say. If you're gonna wear crampons, you know, yeah. that th these are good, but for that moment, for the rest of the time, particularly on those two trips, I would say your hiking boots are probably better for you. Yeah. Do you agree with that, James? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Possibly a, a basket crampon, like I said, a C1, just to, yeah. in case. Okay. You know I mean? but yeah. Nice. Yeah, because yeah. thinking of the Ring of Fire. Is the Ring of Fire, she on, in the one in Ecuador? Uh, no, no, I'm thinking, yeah, for the Ring of Fire in July. I think, for if you, because on that trip, you're on Cotopaxi. Um, then it's definitely a good, it's a good point that, more onto this level. Good right? point, actually, yeah, but it's whether you want to bring them both. It's a lot, isn't it? Uh, yeah, because you do have the weight or like, yeah. like say bring bring like the, 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 the regular basket crampon, um, yeah. the, the C1 for, to go on them. Because yeah. they are stiff enough, I think, to get they by are. on it. Um, it's, it's one of those, Diane, where it's if you've got like, I'll be honest, if it was me, the honest answer is I'd probably take both. Yeah, so would I. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, and I would just sacrifice weight elsewhere yeah. somehow. I would just take less sweets or something. Yeah. I would probably bring both. <laughs> I don't know, are you on your Haribos? Yeah. Or uh, actually, uh, those sweets, Diane, you brought on the training weekend, was it last year? I use them a lot. They were amazing. I buy them all the time then. Yeah, they are brilliant. They're the vegan take worms them. from yeah. uh, Marks and Spencers. Oh, nice. What are they called, Walter worms? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I want to yeah. go with Walter the worm. But they're great. I'll Diane, buy them all the time. correct us if we're wrong. Uh, <laughs> but they That's were great. Cool. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the weekend at the training weekend as well, which is not far from here. It's up near Langos. Uh, oh, you nice. haven't got a training weekend this weekend. So. Oh, beautiful. Looking forward to seeing you. Um, right, I know. So we, we spent a bit of time on, on boots then. What should we do now? I know we've, we could talk about jackets and things. Should we, should we talk about sleeping bags because they're behind us? Yeah, it why not? It seems a lot easier to do supermarket sweep when they're behind us. I know. It's um, right there. Yeah. So, so essentially, then, yeah. I'll, I'll be a customer. So I've come in, I'm going to Everest Base Camp. Yeah. yeah. And I've been told I need a four season sleeping bag, but I'm not sleeping in a tent, I'm kind of indoors. Yeah. We're in this range, I think, I can see the main equipment on there, but I'm not sure if that's a four season. <coughs> so yeah, if you are it's gonna heaps. be indoors, you, well, yeah, you could, you could have uh, a down bag instead of a synthetic, but yeah, okay. like on the, anything on the left hand side is gonna be our higher sort of, yeah. uh, higher end range, which is gonna cover a four season bag. Um, and then it'd be the temperatures. Unfortunately, I've never yeah. had the opportunity to go. I don't think. Mate, you gotta uh, come. <laughs> well, one day maybe. But um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, what would be the temperature range then for base? Indoors. I mean, it depends what time of year you go. If mm. if you're going um, sort of early spring, so March, maybe April. Yeah. Or you're doing it in uh, November, kind of going into December. Yeah. You know, you you can get down to like minus fifty, minus twenty in terms of outside, but yeah. in the tea houses, because like I said, we're in. You know, thing is that they're built differently. All right, yeah. So they, they you do feel some of the cold. Um, you know, it can be in, in I know in Gorakshep especially, which yeah. is like right near Everest. I, yeah. I, I definitely inside minus the 10. room it can go, but yeah, it, it can go low. Yeah, like so. I would. They're like almost like wooden tents in a way, <laughs> you know. So and they're not insulated. Yeah. It's like a single piece of and ply some, or something that might protect you from the exactly. outside. Exactly. Wow. It can go below zero in the room, certainly. Yeah, so it can yeah, easily easy. go to minus five in the room. Yeah. Um, Sometimes lower, but more in winter. But yeah, say minus five, minus ten. Then, if you were recommending, yeah, a, I'd, a bag. I'd probably say then either the Sea to Summit. Um, yep. or the the Nemo is essentially I'm the Nemo discos. Um, so yeah, they they are the the sort of highest end of the range that we've got. Okay. You could get away with the Robins, uh, the yep. six hundred there, which yeah, that'll, that'll take you down. Um, I think it's minus six or minus eight. I'm okay, wrong, but but yeah, yeah, the beastie they, bags, aren't they? They are, yeah. Especially like I said, they they're going to be down as well, so they'll compact nice and light. So, and I, I think something I, I kind of found out early on when buying sleeping bags, obviously they're not cheap. 
No, you know, definitely not. Especially <laughs> these kind of level ones. Yeah. Because yeah. what would you what would you kind of be budgeted like like two to three hundred pounds for a decent sleep bag for season? Definitely, yeah, yeah. So the the Nemo's come in at uh, three hundred pound at the yeah. moment. So, okay. Yeah. Um, quite a unique bag in some cases because yeah. they've got this hourglass sort of shape to it. So okay. You can actually sleep on your side in a spoon position. Nice. Which pretty good. Yeah. There's not yeah, many bags that are yeah, yeah. sort of dedicated that to it. I mean, they've got some <coughs> rectangle bags which you can do it anyway. But yeah. That's yeah, quite interesting. I didn't know that. They've kept it quite close so yeah that's really we good you should chuck it in one jump in one <laughs> yeah go on man. go on i had to do a lace down <laughs> fine, <laughs> one. Yeah. fine i'll jump in which so, one yeah, we've got the top See, one there it's live the tv one. steve you have to kind of follow them <laughs> it's all right I'll, I'll be back i'll be back i'll be back <laughs> you could have got it in it yeah yeah I, I tell you what we're gonna um again, go. why not let's get in there we'll get a mat for you as well uh Zach, okay. can we put these in my car please <laughs> <laughs> Watch it before he goes. Well, by here, well, down there. The okay, right. Okay, okay. Oh, let me, let me. Blown up. Uh, it's all right. I'll, 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 honestly, this is quite hard. This is fine. This is fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's get it in there. Okay. So, if I was sleeping on my side, like this way, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah. I reckon this is going to be very warm. No, hands up on the comments if Andy needs to do the rest of the live in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest, this is quite, this is very cosy. Oh, there we go. Okay. I see what you mean, so you can lie. You, you turn it upside down slightly, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's your head, is there? You're, you're twisted in the bag. <sighs> okay. Clearly I need training with sleeping bags, right? But if, if... Okay, so lying down then, so literally... Clear the managers just laughing at what we're doing <sighs> to a <our> store. <laughs> Modern mod in the the, uh, the sleeping bag. Okay, so if I was lying down like this, yeah, so I can see it's it's quite cozy. Yeah, it's quite. I suppose with sleeping bags, then it has to be quite tight on you, otherwise there's too much air passes, right? Yeah, um, obviously <coughs> a lot of people come in and uh, the main Warm. issue is the <laughs> feel of uh, being claustrophobic essentially so yeah. yeah a lot of people don't like the mummy shape but okay yeah we, we've got a few rectangle bags uh, mounted equipment do a mounted equipment quilt which is really nice yeah just a tall box essentially and then you just put it over you but it's not it's not uh, free seasons so yeah yeah it's, it's just too cold like but yes that's the nemo disco okay yeah. goes, that's 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 live tv unscripted that's, uh, unscripted <laughs> Quite, it's quite cozy actually. Um, yeah, so oh, I could do the rest uh, of it Debbie's season. asked, um, she's hiring one of ours from EBC, will it be okay. four season? 100% yes. Debbie, it'll, yes. be, it'll be fully ready and equipped for the um, <sighs> for EBC track. Um, we've had a, there were Walter Worms. Walter Worms. Did I Walter say Walter? Worms. You did. Yeah, yeah. You got, four, that's, four that's Walter. Points, yeah, that's 10 points. Um, yeah, awesome. So we're just gonna go through some, should we, what do you think? We've had a question actually from yeah. Shona. Who said she had a pair of Rab Guide GTX gloves when doing Calipatar okay. and really struggled with the cold as minus 20. Yeah. Uh, would mitts be better? Yeah, so that's a good point actually. I've um, certainly in, in terms of those, the, yeah, the Rab Guide GTX gloves, I, I think they're not, they haven't got down on them. Are if, they if the I'm leather right. ones? I think they I are. I think they, they are, yeah. Do you know the Rab Guide GTX glove? Sorry, I think they're the leather one. Sent He's going uh, for it. He's off. For it. This is good. He is off. Th this is why we have this. Him. Is why this, this is why is we're in, in, in the store. But um, generally speaking, I'd say mitts are, are considered a lot warmer. Yeah. Um, if you do want, obviously, when you wear mitts, you do sacrifice a lot of that, you know, dexterity. Um, but Andy actually has a pair of black diamond. I think they're ski mitts. They're my so ski mitts. They're designed they so you can like. I yeah. think that you have three fingers. It's kind of like a weird sort of Spock effort. But you uh, you have sort of it's it's half a mitt and half a glove, yeah. so you do have a finger and a, a forefinger and a thumb, but the rest of your hand is sleeved in a mitt. Yeah. So it does enable some dexterity to pick things up and things like that. So there yeah. is options. Yeah. Um, be a hundred percent. I would say mitts are definitely warmer. Um, the okay. alternative no is you can put um, you can wear liners and things like that yeah. that do take the edge off. Um, but yeah, mitts. I've, I've got a pair, but I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't often wear them. I, lo I love using the mitts. If it depends, you know, because some people do suffer with, you know, their extremities getting colder. Yeah. Uh, was it Raynaud's? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. a lot. Of, you know, some some people have them. So yeah, definitely make sure you've got to look after your, your, your hands and your feet. But you can get some gloves that have like two layers. So mm. you know, you can have an inner and then out, and the outer glove is is sort of down filled. Um, especially if you go to minus twenty, and if you've struggled with the other ones. I definitely worth getting some mitts awesome. because because for me I always take um, one is like a 
kind of take the edge off glove, which, which is very thin. You know, I can still use like my, my camera. Um, you know, it's, it's got like one of those kind of weird kind of touch points on there, so you can still use your touch screen. Yeah. Um, they're really good. And then if it gets really cold, I'll then put the um, the kind of insulated ones on. You know, the Montane ones, yeah. they're very small. Yeah, brilliant. The Montane prism gloves. Yes. Yes. They're like little yeah. down jackets for your hands. Yeah. They are, brilliant. Yeah. I wore them on Kilimanjaro, and that's yeah. all I had. Yeah. And it was freezing and it was on cold. Kilimanjaro. The wind was, it was, really was probably good. like 30 odd, um, 35, 40 miles an hour. I want to check in with you, Jamie, because we've kept yeah. you a lot longer than we intended. Yeah, sorry. Are you happy to hang around, or <laughs> do you need to dive and help? I think I might need to pop off. Okay, yeah, it's no worries. Busier, but yeah, yeah, if you do, fine. run to Zach first so they take your mic off you. <laughs> um, yeah. But Jamie, honestly, it's been yeah, mate. Thanks for for everything we've talked about the equipment. I mean, we'll still be um, we might be calling out something. <laughs> In that's a bit. fine, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll run and get some. But thanks for showing us, obviously, about the boots, about the sleeping bags. Um, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, and obviously anyone that wants to have, you know, yeah. the questions you're asking now, but in person, come see him. Yeah, in bracket. <laughs> um, just before you go as well, I know because, you know, we've been, um, you know, before we, we go into some more, more questions, uh, obviously we've been partners with, with Cotswold Outdoors for, like, best part of three, three and a half years now. Mm. Don't forget, if you are an Evertrek customer, um, you do get some discount with Cotswold Outdoors as well. Well, that's in all of the stores. Just make sure you do check in the in the membership uh, area, uh, in the members area. Sorry, um, that you can download that code and, and you, you get to use it. Because uh, yeah, get your cheeky little fifteen percent off, which is quite nice. Definitely. So I thought I'd throw that Definitely before you go. It, yeah. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> which is good. But yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very no much, Jamie. Cheers, Jamie. Thanks for help today. Yeah. Thanks for helping Andy get in that back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Clearly, I need, I need to show how to sit in it properly. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. Hey right. to, to Kev Beavis as well, all the way from, I think, Dingbotch at the minute. He is, 4.450. Yeah, He's probably so done the climatization day today, I reckon. So yeah. I hope um, you probably went to Nangatang Peak or Shukung Valley. Uh, but anyway, whatever it is, mate, I hope you're well. Um, and I hope everything is going well after the bite. But uh, yeah, I hope all is well, Kev. Oh yeah, um, Kev got a bit uh, up close and personal with a guard dog. Or rather, the guard dog got a bit up close and personal with Kev. He did, um, but I hope he's okay. Should we dive into the queues, do you reckon? Let's do the queues. We've, we've had quite a few. I know we've got, what, about 25 minutes left. Um, yeah, heaps of stuff. I know we've, we've gone and touched on, on, on boots and sleeping bags. Any other part, any other equipment that we've, we've kind of, you know, like a bit more in depth? Um, well, yeah, we, we, them, we might, might have to run over and get some because we've had some questions on that's some okay, certain that's things. That's okay, that's good. I, I, Dave, I can always send you off. I mean, we've got World Joyce here, haven't we? Yeah, that's it. Even if you want, uh, we've got some weird things. We've got Frisbees by here. which is Yeah, that, that's, uh, there's an Aerobee Pro Blade there. I reckon that's um, not to be you don't want to play that. fetch on the Everest Base Camp track, though, because it's quite, quite a lot of dangerous cliffs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throw it into the mist and see what happens. Um, um, right, okay, question. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, first one from Samantha yes. Wright. Um, yes. Hi. Hi, Samantha. Hey, Sam. A uh, bit of a random one. Uh, what time did the day start en route to EBC? Yes. You're up at 5.30 or 6 or 7. You're up at 5.30, 6, 7 days a week. Will you be pleased? Uh, yes, you will be pleased <laughs> because that's probably a lot earlier than you are going to be on the EBC trek. Yeah. Generally speaking, I think I wake up at around 6, 6.30 most days on an EBC trek, um, and then you're kind of downstairs for breakfast at 7.30, yeah. and then you're kind of on the road by eight. Um, that does change depending on the group. Some people, if the group's really up and at them, you can get up super early <coughs> and you can go a bit earlier. Sometimes if the, the overall group needs a little yeah. bit extra time to get prepared in the morning and recover from the, a hard day, then you may go a bit later. Um, there are certain rules, so when you go to EBC, you'll be getting up super early, like half three, four o'clock, um, maybe five at the latest. When you yep. go to Kalapatar, again, you know, super early in the morning because you want to get up to Kalapatar for sunrise. Um, so you're talking like, what, 3.30, 4.30? There's some days, yeah. I think always with, um, when it comes to, you know, the, the, the times and, and especially, you know, you lean on your guide because they'll say, okay, guys, this is what's the plan for tomorrow. So you'll get some sort of briefing. Um, try and remain as flexible as you can because sometimes, you know, we've had groups before that might take a bit longer one day and then you've got a super early day the next day and, and, and kind of you know, do lean on your guide with that and especially around um, you know how tired you are how physical you are just how physical it is just just kind of you know ask your guide around it and some of the questions around it because you know it can be sometimes it's hard when you're, you're tired and you think oh I've got to get up really early but see it as part of the challenge yeah um, you know it's important sometimes to remember that especially on like an Everest base camp trek and you know it's around. Um, you know you're obviously on the mountain for what, like 11 days trekking. Yeah, yeah. You know there's going to be times where you're going to feel tired, you're going to feel you know a bit uh, kind of rough, and try and sort of 
crack on with it, but see that as part of the challenge as well. Yeah. Do you agree? A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, it sounds like if you're getting up at like 5.30 yeah. uh, at home, um, you'll probably be glad of a lie-in. <laughs> um, but for me, yeah, that, exactly. that would be horrible. Um, so Zach from York has asked, what size backpack do I need for your trips? Uh, do you need to bring your own duffel bag? Well, it's good, it's good that Zach from York has, has asked that question. It's a very good question because we're actually in a position where we can maybe grab some. Do you want to grab, uh, what would you prefer to grab? This one because it's closer? I tell you what, I'm going to grab the one that's my bag. Okay, go for um, it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my bag's an XL. This is a large. Um, I don't so, think, uh, yeah, go on, yeah, it's fine, yeah. So yeah. Th if you are going to bring a duffel bag, yeah. this, is the, this is exactly the bag that I use, only mine's now a much yeah. duller, rougher colour. Um, this is the North Face uh, uh, Base Camp, I think it's called. Yeah, I think it is. Base Camp yeah. Duffel. It's a relatively simple duffel in yeah. terms of its like construction, but it's yeah. really durable, waterproof. Um, this one, I think, is mine's the XL, which is a 130 litre bag. This yeah. is the large, which, if for memory, I think is a 100 litre bag. Yeah. Which, if you were going to like EBC or something like that, this would be perfect. Yeah. The reason I have a bigger one is because I tend to carry a lot more equipment and I do a lot more trips a year. Um, so, generally, the space is needed. Yeah. But this is, you know, something. I mean, there's oh, also. Dave, you've got to hold it out and stand there for a minute now. And no, you've got to hold it out. I'll sit and then stand there for a minute. For a whole minute. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> yeah. Um, but there are other options yeah, yeah. as well. Like this is another common one as well, like the mountain equipment. Um, but I think this is a 80. That's an 80, yeah. You, yeah the so thing is, you, you can, uh, sorry, that's a 60. There's an 80 and a, a 120 there. Yeah. They're, certainly when it comes to size, anything between 8 to 120 is, is, is fine. I mean, 80 to 100. If you're 120, I've got a 120, probably a bit overkill. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do take some camera gear and, and, and things like that, you know, tripods. Um, there are certain bits of equipment you probably wouldn't need on a, on a, on a trek or expedition. Um, but comfortably, if it's anything around that sort of 60 to 80, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, don't forget, obviously, if you are in, 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 in Nepal and you're coming on one of our Nepalese trips, you do get one of our Evertrek bags. Yeah. Um, we're, we're looking to roll that out out over the next 12 months in all the other countries but at the moment you only get to keep one of the Evertrek bags in in the uh, in Nepal yeah um, which is you know awesome. something, something we like to do and in terms of a day pack yes do I run over and grab a day pack yeah sure mate. Well, this is live TV look um this is like an accidental partridge moment <laughs> so I'm gonna run across the store brilliant. are you literally following him now yeah he is gonna follow me over here <laughs> um oh, which bag do I choose okay I'm gonna go for this now he, he's gonna he's gonna suddenly come out of the mist so I'm going to bring this one, which is a good example of um, nice. a good Perfect, a good Perfect. day pack. Um, what is what is that one? Is that a talent? This is a oh, high light. Yeah, thirty two. Yeah, thirty two liter high light. So yeah, this yeah. is the sort yeah. of pack. It's quite nice actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good trekking pack. Um, it's really light. It's ergonomic. It's got the breather build back and stuff like yeah. that. Most importantly, so this is a thirty two liter backpack. Yeah. Um, being an osprey. It's got the uh, the little bit at the back here yep. where the, um, the the bladder hose comes out and stuff at the top there, easily packable. You've got side pockets and things for snacks and whatnot. This is a really good bag. Also, these loops and things, these are what you would put your uh, poles through. There are other bags, there's a talon, which I think has more features than this one, but just as an example, this is the type of thing you want to be looking at. Yeah, it's at. quite nice, isn't it? I see yeah. what you mean. It's quite, it's, it's, it's I mean, not, not too many frills with it. There is a talon. I could grab a talon, but I think I'll put this. Uh, yeah. But this is a good example of pretty much one. This is like a light one, actually. But um, yeah, it's quite nice. It's got the mesh on it as well, just in terms of the sweat. Yeah, and um, what I got, love is these as well. It's got space for bladder as well, which is perfect. Yeah. Now, the reason I just get that as an example is because it yep. was 32 liters, so yep. I thought it would be perfect. The reason why you don't really want to go much more than that is because you don't want to be carrying too much weight yeah. with you. It's important that you, you know, you pack as light as you need to. Now, that's not to say sacrifice things that you need, yeah. but don't carry things that you don't need. Um, if you've got a 45 litre backpack, people have a tendency to put 45 <laughs> litres in it because you're sitting there with your duffel, you're wondering what to put in, you've got the space, so you start thinking, yeah. well, I may as well put it in for peace of mind. And then you think, well, I may as well put that in as well. And I may as well put that in. And you end up in a situation with one of our customers, and she won't mind me saying it, Kate Ramsey, who we actually had on the live. Um, That's right. Yeah, when I was, I was away on a trip, she, and she was on, she was one of our previous competitions. Yeah, and yeah. we were going up um, 
to Dingboche, yeah. and just before we got to the stupa, not far from Dingboche, she put her bag down, boom, nearly triggered an avalanche. And I was like, what on earth is in that bag, Kate? And I had a look at it, and I swear it was about 13 kilos, full of books for Kenton Cool because he was out in That's the mountains. That's right, yeah, she wanted to sign the books. I had yeah, to yeah. tell her. I remember that. I had to tell her, just get him to sign a bit of paper and put use it as a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that, and that wow. will be it. Brilliant. But yeah, there we go, guys. That's a good example. Nice, Dave, I'm nice. I'm going to put that here um, and so I can put it back later. Just want to shout out to Heather as well, Heather Newman, who, who popped into the store, actually. She oh, caught us Heather, literally. yeah. Five minutes before we were due to go live. Yeah, Heather, it was great to, to meet you. Yep. Um, it was great to obviously chat. I know, um, obviously, recently come back from a trip and going to Everest next October, I believe. So yeah, absolutely great to see you. Um, I think Emily uh, asked, and I think Shona might have answered it, but how big is the Evertrek duffel bag? Um, for anyone who hasn't seen that, yes, eighty liters. The the one in the pool now. Yeah. Um, and I know the the one that Dave got there was eighty, so the the same um, the same size. That that is the eighty one, isn't it? I That's the 81, yeah. Sorry, the, the, pointing, that that the, large there, I think, is 100. 100 yeah. Essentially between 80 and 100 yeah. litres. Um, 80 litres is the ones we give in Nepal. If you're looking to get <laughs> your own to take on another trip, um, 80 to 100 litres is more than adequate. Yeah. The great thing is, they, they, although you saw it and it looks quite big, yeah. a duffel bag will pack down really flat. Um, so generally speaking, you don't have to put all of your travel stuff in that bag initially. You yeah. can pack it in a suitcase and you can take everything nice and easy. When you get to your destination, you can take the duffel bag out, put everything you need for trekking in the duffel bag yeah. and leave your suitcase and anything you don't need locked away in the hotel um, or in Imlil if you're on Tupacal. But essentially it's locked away nice and safe. I get a lot of supermarket suite references. I think it was Pry was mentioning um, uh, the, the competition where the winner gets a 60 second supermarket sweep and Evertrek foot the bill. That would be awesome. I'd 100% go what straight to the boots. great idea. I go, I go straight to the boots because honestly, <laughs> there's, there's probably a thousand Claire's of Claire's looking at us though, and yeah, she's thinking, I'm not sure you about You grab that. one of those boots. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, That's a good show. Oh, yeah. That's a Claire's good show. actually the, uh, going to Machu Picchu. Um, yes. next year and she's going to be doing some fundraising so if you're in Brecon when she does it come and give us some hand because she's going to be Definitely. running I think a marathon around Brecon and some money, and some money yeah <laughs> yeah ideally raising the money yeah yeah um, yeah, but honestly, she's going to be running a marathon um, pretty much in Brecon Town Centre in like these 2K yeah. up, down, up, down, up, down to, to, to raise money for uh, Help for Heroes. So if you are about in Brecon when that's happening, get in touch with the store, come down, donate. It'd be great for her. I'm just, uh, where was it? I've, uh, I think it was Andrew Rooks. I think I'll, I'll answer this one only because I, I know we covered a little bit, but you might have missed it. But um, head into EBC in April 23, have a three seasons bag. Is this enough or will I need four seasons? Yeah, so when we were talking about the sleeping bags, the you, you can get away with it with, with, with three season. I, I have taken a three season to Everest Base Camp. Um, it wasn't in April, I've been in April, and April is actually pretty warm. Um, at the time we went mm -hmm. with, with um, some of the guys, Max and Tom, in the tea house, it wasn't actually that, sorry, it wasn't actually that cold. No, I was colder in, um, um, it's funny, because that was the only time I've been there where I've had real big snow. Yeah, and it yeah, wasn't it was the a lot coldest, snow, it? Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't the coldest. But it was, it certainly dropped below, uh, below zero. You yeah. might get away with it with three season. If not, obviously you can use our sleeping bags, uh, which are four seasons, which are, you know, some of the, the high end uh, or similar to the high end sleeping bags you can see behind us. Um, I would recommend that, you know, if, if you wanted to bring that three season, uh, there will be blankets and, and, and sort of duvets and things in the tea houses. Just be wary as you do go up, especially towards um, like Lobuche or uh, Dingboche, Lobuche, and then um, Gorak Shep it does get colder, um, especially if the wind's up as well. That's the, the buildings are built differently in the hall in terms of the, um, <laughs> sorry, they're just moving things around the store. Uh, yeah, they do, um, uh, they built the different regulations. So you, sometimes the wind can come through the bricks, isn't it? I know we've been in Gorek Shep and it's just been, yeah, it's cold. You will always feel the cold there. Yeah. So just be wary of that because you, you want to get try and get as good a sleep as you can. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit, Andrew. Awesome. Um, I tell you what, um, Louise yeah. Walker's asked a really good question, okay. which is one I don't think we've had for a while, but it's very important. So what essentials would go in your day pack? Nice. Now, okay. yeah. it does, uh, there are some sort of, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sweets is the most important. There are some things that are like uh, absolute given. So yeah. we'll start with, yeah, with sweets, snacks, things to keep your morale and energy up throughout the day yeah. that you can just reach in and grab. Yeah. Um, a fan favorite tends to be Harry Bows. So like Haribo Tangtastics, that type of thing. Steve behind the camera, he's nodding. 
Um, a lot of people will have Snickers bars and things like that. I've seen people have Oreos, beef jerky, whatever yeah. it is. You don't want to take a lot of it. You just want enough for the day. But it's nice to reach in, get a handful of jelly beans and kind of perk yeah. yourself up a little bit. And then you're going to need an, your second most important thing, or perhaps the most important <laughs> thing, which is your water. Yeah. Generally speaking, I knew you were going to go and grab one. So this is a three liter Osprey water bladder that would yeah. fit perfect. I actually use the Osprey bladders in pretty much all my bags. They're brilliant. Um, they're really good, really easy to use. Uh, they don't leak. I mean, eventually they all kind of wear out. But these ones, are, I mean, I've it's been... Three liters, that one. This is a three yeah, liter one, nice. yeah. They've also got, I think, a two liter and a 1.5 liter. I would probably say that the two or the 2.5 liter or the or the three or the two liter is probably the best. The 1.5, it's I have small, I'd say. I've used it before, but mm. you know what? If you have a really tough day and yeah. you get hot, that yeah. one and a half if liters is, warm, is obliterated. Yeah, yeah. This is probably one of Definitely. the most important things that goes in it. Yeah. So a water bladder and the water that goes with it. Yeah. Um, but that's probably the most important actually, along with the snacks. And the other things that you need, pretty much yeah. once you've got snacks and water covered, everything else is just about comfort. <clears throat> Pair of thin gloves or warm gloves, depending on what the day's called for. Um, and then maybe like a Gore-Tex jacket or a windbreaker jacket or something like that. Just yeah. for when you stop for lunch, you can put that on and maybe like a beanie. And that's pretty much all I'll have in mind, unless I've missed yeah. anything and that you would, uh, you would have. No, you've got the key stuff. I think, yeah, naturally, yeah, you've got your snacks, you've got your water, you've got your beanie, as you said, sun cream. Carry sun cream with you, especially high altitude, because really good. I know. I'm just, I'm just talking from experience. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we all, um, especially coming off, um, yeah, like Steve Killy. Steve was behind the camera. We should get the picture His of Steve's hands. hands shouldn't we need, we? That we need one to picture. find that, and dig that out, because it's like your hands aged about forty years in one, well, one I image. Well, I thought you had leprosy for a while. It was, <laughs> it was quite bad. Yeah, so look after yourself at a high altitude when it comes to sun cream. I, I use fifty on my nose and, and kind of round here, because you know uh, you, you're a high altitude. The, the UV rays, uh, you know, more they, they penetrate more, so you will feel it more. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, nice. I would say that's really important. One other thing, sunglasses, yeah. but they'll be on your Shades. they'll be on my head generally. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it. Generally, what will happen is the like the night before when you're in the lodge. If we're doing EBC, for example, um, you'll be have your meal, you sit yep. down, play some cards. Then the guide will come in and tell you a little bit about what you're going to be doing the next day. Um, and generally speaking, on the way up to like Le Boucher, it'll be more or less the same: light pair yep. of gloves, jacket, wind stopper, something to keep you warm. When you get past Lobouchet and you're on the glacial territory and the weather gets quite cold, you might then stuff your down jacket in there and your thicker gloves. Yeah. Um, I tell you what I always bring as well, which is something I always have on every single hike, whether it's EBC or like the Brecon Beacons. Yeah. I always put a spare base layer in there. I run hot, I sweat a lot, and even though I do tend to buy the Merino, they get drenched. When you stop for lunch or something, I can get really quite cold, so I'll generally swap base layers at that point. Um, and have yeah, that so definitely you know one of the things that I do take probably more than most people yep. is base layers um, but I'll happily swap <coughs> one over just so I keep the the core temperature up because I am conscious although I'm yeah. sweating and boiling when I'm hiking when you stop in the Himalaya and it's below zero you can that's not a great thing um, right a couple more before we I mean what we got there uh, 20 past um, yeah we're looking uh, we got one from Natalie here it's a good question actually climbing Killy in July nice uh, it's fast approaching we're planning um, the Serengeti. So yeah, you're looking at one of the strip, trip extensions. Awesome. Um, we do, uh, do we stay in a hotel each night during that or is it camping? So yeah, the Serengeti is, is, is very remote. Um, there are some uh, kind of high-end lodges that you, I mean, you know, we're talking thousands of pounds, but we stay, um, especially in the Serengeti and the camps. Um, if you are the first day when you get near um, Ngorongoro Crater um, or Lake Manyara, so on the way essentially, literally, I'm trying to think it's about four or five hours um, from Arusha. Uh, so it's a bit of a drive. But then when you get there and you get to the top of Ngorongoro, there is accommodation there that's kind of um, the accommodation used by, they call it the, like the local services. It's quite nice actually, wasn't it? The, the Overlook Hotel, isn't it? Oh, the Overlook. That's off the Shining. <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it's similar like that. It's basically Overlook. Overlook and no play makes Andy a, is it a, a dull boy, is that it? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Oh, well, that's niche, Dave. Yeah. Um, but essentially, it's a, it's a really uh, nice hotel, but it overlooks kind of the, the, the valley, not far from Lake Manyara. It's quite beautiful. Uh, so that's kind of day one. Is that and where then we stayed? Yeah, it was, yeah, with a pool. Yeah, I remember it. Really yeah. nice pool. Beers around the pool. It's quite, it's quite nice after you've done Killy to go and relax and do that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely. It's uh, but it, when you're in the Serengeti, it is camping. 
Okay. That's going to really bug me now for the rest of the live, what that hotel's called. It's all right, you've got seven Is it minutes, something top? I don't know. Okay. I can't remember what it's called. We should know this, shouldn't we? But Natalie, <sighs> we'll, uh, we'll message you afterwards with the name of that hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, right, the next one, uh, maybe one for you, mate. Um, Rob Smith. Yeah. Hey, chaps, looking for a good waterproof coat recommendation. Obviously, Gore-Tex are equivalent, but which brand works best? Yeah, that's, so that's biggie. honestly, waterproof coats is something we could probably do an entire live on. Yeah. We may have done one already. We have, yeah. Um, there Water is, off a of Yeti's back. Is that what it was? That's what it's called, yeah. Yeah, so maybe you can rewind, but maybe that was a little bit ago. It's a while so, ago. Yeah, so we'll refresh now. Generally yeah, yeah. speaking, you do get what you pay for with waterproof jackets, which means yeah. that you like there are Architerix jackets out there that are like 600 yeah. quid. They're brilliant, but honestly, probably way out of the budget of most mere mortals. Yeah. I tend to shop in and around the 180 to 250 sort of range. Um, and the jacket that I've been using for a long time, although it is massively worn out because yeah. I've brutalized that thing, is the Rab Firewall. It's a really good waterproof jacket. Um, I think it was around 180 for that one. Yeah. And that's Rab. That's what we um, use on like Evertrek training weekends. Yeah. I've heard there might be rain this weekend. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, yeah. It's always training. It's, it'll, rain, it'll rain. Right? Except the last one when we had blistering sun. Um, <laughs> that was mad, eh? Yeah. So that's pretty much a good... Um, they use P Rab Pertex, which is their own sort of technology similar to Gore-Tex. Yeah. The other thing is you can get Berg House um, and then uh, Mountain Equipment. I think they do the Lotsi jacket that's pretty good. Berg House do the Extreme range, which yeah. is really, really good. Can get expensive. Uh, can, can, get, get can get expensive. Then, if you want to do things a little differently, yeah. um, you can get a brand called Paramo, yep. which I think is where I'm going to go next. Um, they are very expensive, but they're a different type of technology. The reason I like Paramo at the moment is because I've tried a few jackets on. Their waterproof jackets tend to be quite loud and crinkly, and when you've got the hood up, they're quite loud. Yeah. The Paramo is a soft shell, and it uses... A different type of technology and it does look like it's drenched through when it gets wet but actually you're yeah. dry underneath um, and Steve Jones our uh, guide on the training weekends yeah. um, he swears by Paramo and that's what he uses um, and if it's good enough for him and he pretty much spends his entire life on a Welsh mountainside <laughs> it's good enough for me so yeah check out Rab that song? If good it's enough. good enough for you it's good wow enough for me. beautiful yeah. look at that uh, serenaded <laughs> yeah so check out Rab um, mountain equipment, uh, Berg House, and yeah. Paramo. Yeah. Um, if you want to spend a little extra, but generally get the best you can afford as well. I wouldn't try and save money on a waterproof um, because all you're going to be doing is wearing a wet jacket. Remember nice. that? Remember that mega cheap one I had before? I think I spent oh, yeah. about seventy blue. quid. It was a blue one. Blue one. I, I don't want to say the brand because they. It was North Face, but they do some. <laughs> they do some really good jackets, um, but I bought like that a real. Them, right? I bought a cheap one, and we went out hiking yeah, one day. I remember that. He was bone dry at the end of the yeah. thing, and I was like, I was like, I, th this has done nothing. <laughs> I think but, a big thing, you know, that, and something I was I was reading about the other day is that when it comes to waterproofs, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on it; it needs to be treated. So yeah. when you first buy one, it always you know you see the water beading off, and then as dirt and grime and sweat gets in in like the pores, especially Gore-Tex. Same with Paramo actually. Um, but they, you need to treat it, so you get like, um, I think we got some around there, I believe, but basically you have this wash, I think it's called Tech Wash, I think it's called, um, and make sure that you use that, and then you've got the spray then. So essentially, you know, if you've got a jacket that's 100 quid, you've got one that's 300 quid. If you've got that and keep it well maintained and well washed, so the water beads, otherwise it'll just wet through, which means you'll get wet and your jacket will look soaked. If, it, if it's got to that stage, you need to retreat it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so it doesn't matter what kind of level of jacket you got. You can get with a hundred pound if it's treated and it's got it it's probably, and, and, and everything's good to go. Um, it's probably better than some like two, three hundred pound jackets that haven't got it and they're they're, yeah. they're, they're they're wet through, which means they're they're kind of compromised. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to know whatever jacket you've got, you need to keep it washed yeah. and maintained and do read the instructions because I've heard of some people do it and they've washed in and they've tumble dried it. And next thing you know, it's been destroyed, and, and I'm sure it would be very painful. Yeah. Um, whilst we're trying to remain as sustainable as we can with these jackets, you know. Yeah. Actually, talking about, um, I'll jump into looking after things yes. and sustain sustainability. What's really cool, and we noticed this in this store today. Yeah. Just, just down there, right? Just to my left, by there, 
um, is a nice little handy box. So if you are coming in to get a new pair of boots and you yes. have a really old crummy pair that you no longer use, you can put them in there. Um, and what, are they, what is it called? It's like a. It's called the Recycle My Steve, Gear. Can you, can How you it, see it from there? I'm going to read it. Out. Yeah, Steve's going to Steve's going to bring it over. Bring yeah, it bring over, it, bring Steve. it over, Steve. Bring it over. I think we've got we've still got time. I imagine it's going to be completely full of boots, Steve. Is it heavy? It's not to a man like me. <laughs> nice. Look <laughs> yeah. at this. It's this like, is wow, it. That's like a talk He's desk. not just a cameraman or a director. Strongest man in Brecon. <laughs> yeah, it's really but this cool. This is great, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, so hopefully you can all see that there, how it works. It's really cool. Nice. And, and inside, look, is an old pair of boots. Yeah, so needed. It's getting recycled. Pretty good there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I also noticed something else which is really cool, which is that there's, there's a machine over there that you can actually put your boots in. Okay. Um, and it treats them. Um, so I think it, I th yeah, it's like oh, waterproof. Nice. So good. I think it sprays yeah. them. So I think I'm going to bring my main dolls in for the training weekend before we get up there and give them a, give them a good treat. I think. And I think um, yeah, with, with this kind of stuff. So especially when it comes to the sustainable side of things, um, you know, using and, and giving away your old gear instead of it just lying around the house. I mean, I can think of a couple of things I could probably bring in um, that would be put to use. Um, and again, then it saves other things from being bought and bought and bought, and you have loads of stuff you don't really use it. It's quite handy. That mm. is like my garage. <laughs> like your carriage but I think with, with Cotswold Outdoor they're obviously doing a big push on that yeah. um, uh, so if you do have any old stuff uh, do go to one of the stores and you know it, it can put, put that old equipment to good use if you're not going to sell it and it's just going to be lying around yeah um, and yeah but right it's half past now so it was, I hope it's been useful That's today quick. I know it's flown by um, yeah, Dave, it's been great isn't it? coming out and yeah, no, it's great. Doing morning Cotswold Outdoor and we want you know we, we wanted to do these things during COVID and yeah. actually you yeah. know travel around and do some lives in some new places. We did get a little gap where you saw the um, the Altitude Center. Yeah. And we wanted to come here because Cotswolds have been a great partner for us, um, yeah. you know, and they help us and our customers by giving discounts and things like that. So we wanted to come here <coughs> as well. Um, yeah, and it's amazing. And should we shut this off? I want to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I hope it's going great. Um, yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, we got some exciting news for next week, so definitely tune in. Um, but yeah, we hope it's been useful. Uh, as always, uh, you know, drop the questions in so we've got some for next week. Um, but yeah, I hope it's been really useful. It's been, it's been interesting looking at the boots and yep. sleeping bags. It's nice to get in one. I feel like I want to get in one in the cold with snow and ice. It's quite warm in here. It's quite warm. Under the lights I, I need to get outdoors. Well. And Jamie. Thanks, thanks Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, 